Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. On a desert island somewhere on this large planet, we see a woman lying on the beach with a life jacket on. The young woman's name is Jen, she was unconscious and when she regains consciousness, she notices that Brad, her friend, is unconscious. She runs to him and upon turning him over, sees a piece of coral embedded in his stomach. Barely alive, Jen, terrified, screams for help but there's no response. She takes off her backpack and life vest, and then drags Brad further away from the water. Jen then removes the coral from her friend's belly and uses her scarf to press against the wound. She then ventures into the nearby woods, finds a coconut, opens it with a rock, and hurriedly returns to Brad, pouring the coconut water into his mouth, only to find that he has already died. Holding his face, she calls for him, but her friend is gone, leaving her devastated. The island where Jen and Brad are stranded has a small strip of beach surrounded by dense forest. Jen, in grief, walks around the island, completing a circle and returning to Brad's body. She then enters the jungle, reaching a clearing where she sees a bag hanging from a tree and a red cooler. Excited, she calls out again, hoping to see someone, but no one answers. Jen examines the bag's contents and, seeing a medicine with a date of 1994, realizes that whoever was there before her was long ago. In the cooler, she finds some bottles of Coca-Cola, but soon leaves it behind, moving on to find a thermos and a small metal box. Inside the box, she finds a deck of cards, a pack of matches, and other items. She also discovers an abandoned tent covering a backpack containing an old Game Boy, a car radio, a book, and a teddy bear. When Jen returns to the beach, she hears a sound from a hollow tree and investigates, finding it's a tropical bird. She gathers some leaves to cover Brad and, looking around, sees nothing but sand and ocean. That night, there's heavy rain, and she seeks shelter under some leaves, using a jacket for cover. The next morning, she catches some small fish stranded on the beach. Picking them up, she sees a dead shark, split in half, with deep marks on its body. Jen stares at the sea, wondering what could have caused such wounds. She tries to clean the fish using a flat stone as a knife. It's a difficult task, but she eventually gives up and returns to the cooler, sitting down with her belongings. She opens her diary and finds that the water has erased all the ink. Inside, Jen sees a photo of her and her boyfriend. In the jungle, Jen finds another clearing where she sees a burial site for three people who had been there long before her, which frightens her. She returns to the beach and sees Brad's body, which is already stinking. She drags him closer to the forest, digs a shallow grave, and buries him there, also placing a piece of wood with the initial of his name. That night, Jen improvises a sleeping place and prepares roasted fish for dinner, spending her first night on the deserted island. The next morning, Jen walks along the beach looking for more resources when she's startled to see that Brad's body has been removed from the grave, mutilated, and dragged away by someone or something. She grabs a piece of wood, sharpens it with a stone into a spear for defense, and looks around, expecting to see something, but finds nothing. Night falls again, and Jen is now fully alert to any movement or noise, fearing that whatever took Brad's body might come to attack her. But nothing happens, and all is quiet. The following day, Jen sees something in the distance and decides to swim out to it, finding it to be a bucket and a suitcase. She dives to try and find more and sees a dark hole in the ocean bed. Jen takes the bucket and the box to the beach, where she finds a pair of sneakers and some clothes. That night, which is her third, she changes clothes and puts on the sneakers to stay warmer. Sitting by the fire, she opens the metal box again and examines its contents, finding a secret compartment in the box that hides some photos. She tries to use the fire to examine the images when she hears the sound of a plane overhead. She runs to get the flare and fires it, but it doesn't work. She tries a second time, and it works. With the flare glowing in the distance, she waits to see if she gets a response, but as the flare disappears into the horizon, Jen sees a humanoid monster emerging from the water. Frightened, she runs back to where she was sitting, grabs her wooden weapon, and runs into the jungle. She finds a place to hide, listening to rustling leaves and approaching footsteps. She stays hidden until she eventually hears the monster leave. The next day, Jen runs back to the beach. She looks again at the four photos she was examining the night before, and discovers they are of a family. The last photo shows a woman holding a bag near the tree Jen found earlier. In the photo, Jen can see two shining dots in the distance. 
She contemplates what to do, empties the suitcase, puts her and Brad's life jackets inside, and tries to use it as a raft. She takes this makeshift raft to the ocean and tries to get on it, but despite several attempts, the suitcase raft can't support her weight. So, she throws the life jackets and the suitcase back to the beach. That night, Jen uses the hollow tree as her sleeping place, keeping her weapon close in case the monster returns. At some point during the night, Jen is sleeping inside the trunk when she hears the monster arrive. She tries to stay quiet as the beast approaches and rolls the trunk with Jen inside, but she makes no noise. Luckily the terror doesn't last long, and it ends with the thing going away. The next morning, a frightened Jen comes out of the trunk and manages to catch a small shark using some little fish as bait. She then uses the shark as bait for the monster. That night, which is already the fifth, while hiding in a place where the hanging shark is within her line of sight, she watches, hoping the monster will just take the shark and go away without wanting to go after her. Jen closes her eyes for a short time at some point, and when she opens them, the shark has already disappeared. The next morning, Jen examines the worn ropes and, while sharpening her weapon, sees something in the distance. It's a body floating in the water. She goes up to the body and discovers it's a man cut in half with a mutilated face. Jen then hangs the body in the same way she did with the shark. On the sixth night, Jen is sitting in her hiding place, watching the monster knock down the body and take it to the ocean. She hears the sound of an airplane engine but is still contemplating what to do when she sees the monster's feet nearby. But she manages to stay quiet until the monster moves away. The next morning, Jen prepares a tarp to improvise a high net in the trees, believing that she will be able to rest without being seen by the creature. Later that seventh night, the weather seems to turn, and it thunders a lot. She hears the monster nearby and looks for it, where during a lightning flash, she sees the creature, which unfortunately also sees her there. She quickly lies down in the net, and when the monster approaches, she almost hyperventilates. The monster pulls the net, and Jen falls to the ground but manages to escape the beast. She grabs her weapon, runs to the beach, and continues running desperately. The monster jumps out of the water almost grabbing Jen, but she is faster, and the creature returns to the water, attacking again. This time, it stands up in front of Jen, who attacks it with her weapon. The monster throws her away, but before she can get up, the monster kicks her into the water. Jen looks for the beast, but it has disappeared. Now, injured and scared, she returns to the jungle and takes refuge on top of a tree to try to recover. In the morning, the girl goes down to the beach and washes her wounds from the fight with the monster. Then, Jen changes clothes and is surprised to see an inflatable raft with a tent slowly approaching the island on the horizon. Not believing what she sees, she swims towards the raft and finds two other survivors from the shipwreck, her boyfriend Lucas Griffin and her friend Mia Reed. When they reach the beach, Jen can hardly believe her luck and immediately throws herself into her boyfriend's arms. Lucas reassures her, saying that now everything will be alright. After a while, the girl prepares breakfast for Lucas and Mia and pleases them with a 20-year-old soda. They admire the beauty of the island, but Jen warns about the danger lurking beneath the waters. Lucas asks the girl to calm down and affectionately calls her dear. She tells her friends about the sea monster and the black hole in the ocean floor, where it drags its victims. Seeing that her closest people don't believe her, Jen talks about Zack, whose mutilated body was eaten by the monster. Hearing the name of their friend, Lucas and Mia exchange embarrassed glances. Jen vividly describes all the horror she experienced those days and shows a photo of the deceased family that reveals the shining eyes of the monster. Despite all her arguments, Lucas and Mia remain skeptical. Although Mia believes there are graves on the island of the family that lived here, she wonders who buried them. They suggest that Jen calm down and wait for Brad or anyone else to arrive on the shore, after all, the current takes everyone to this island. Jen tells Mia that Brad, who was her boyfriend, didn't survive the shipwreck, and the monster dragged his body underwater. Mia walks away from her friends in tears, trying to comprehend her loss. After some time, the friends are alone on the beach. Mia stares blankly at the calm surface of the water and tells her friend how scared she was to be in the middle of the vast ocean. She counted each of her days as if they were her last, thinking and going crazy with the silence on the raft. Jen is sure that it is better to risk it on the raft in the ocean than to end up here, devoured by the monster, but her friend disagrees. Lucas also had difficult moments in the last few days and is in no rush to return to the water. However, Jen intends to leave the island before nightfall. She suggests sailing west, because that is the direction the planes fly, so there might be people living there. After that, 
she asks the young man to give her a pocket knife, in order to get as much food as possible before leaving. When opening the pocket knife, the girl finds traces of red liquid on it. She realizes that something terrible happened on the raft and that Lucas and Mia are hiding the truth from her. After gathering food alone for the week, Jen returns to her friends, who are strangely faltering in the scene. They inform her that they are too exhausted to swim again. They think that any scary monster that lives on the island should not be more dangerous than floating on a raft in the open ocean. Instead, they suggest building a fire on the beach and waiting for the planes to appear, but Jen maintains her position. She tries to convince her friends to get into the lifeboat and escape before nightfall, but Lucas explodes at her and refuses to go. Without the support of her closest friends, the girl goes to swim. While in the water, she devises a cunning plan. After waiting for her boyfriend and Mia to let their guard down, Jen puts the prepared supplies in a container and then launches the inflatable raft into the water, making a daring attempt to escape without the two of them. The couple realizes this and starts chasing the girl. Jen tries to get away from them and pushes Mia several times with her feet. Eventually, Lucas manages to throw his girlfriend out of the raft, and Mia immobilizes her, hitting her head with an oar. Jen regains consciousness when it's already dark. She is tied to a tree to prevent her from making another escape attempt. Mia informs that the island is safe and that they haven't found any monsters since it got dark. Mia apologizes for hitting her friend with the oar, but Jen doesn't want to hear anything and asks to be released. Mia still refuses to believe her friend's stories about the sea monster, as Jen often deceived people close to her before and lost their trust long ago. After a round through the jungle, Lucas joins the girls. He assures that he hasn't found any monsters there, but Jen is disturbed and once again says that the monster appears in the water, not in the jungle. Mia decides to leave the couple alone and goes for a walk on the beach. She is horrified to find the mutilated remains of a fish in the sand. A conversation arises between Lucas and Jen, in which the guy first tries to comfort his girlfriend and then decides to say everything he thinks about her. While he was having fun on the yacht with his best friends, Jen was not happy. He thinks that the girl brings him nothing but unhappiness and wants to ruin everything again, deciding to leave the safe island. Jen once again tries to appeal to the guy's mind and asks him to release her, but Lucas refuses to do so. He tries to humiliate the girl and reminds her that he completely supports her. The guy is convinced that even if she manages to leave the island alone without his help, she will become helpless and useless to everyone. Lucas then scolds Jen for wanting to escape the island, leaving him without food and no hope of rescue. The girl explains that there is plenty of food on the island and that the only person to fear is the bloodthirsty monster. After hearing all of Lucas's insults, Jen decides to find out from him what really happened to Zack. On the raft, before he can answer the uncomfortable question, a desperate scream from Mia, who was attacked by the monster, emerges. Lucas grabs a torch and runs to rescue the girl, leaving Jen tied to the tree. When he arrives at the scene, the guy finds the sea monster, which has already started devouring Mia. Lucas hits the monster with the flaming torch, but it easily pushes the opponent away. Jen barely manages to free herself from the bonds and runs to help her friends, but it's already too late. The monster grabs Mia and drags her underwater. Lucas watches in horror but can do nothing to help. When Jen arrives, she grabs the shocked Lucas and takes him to the depths of the jungle, where they spend the night. It's already the ninth day on the island. Lucas hesitates to come down from the tree, fearing that the monster might be waiting for them below. The girl assures the guy that the sea monster never appeared on the coast during the day. The guy is struggling with the events of last night and blames himself for Mia's disappearance. To distract Lucas from his sad thoughts, Jen asks for help to pack their stuff and provisions, so they can finally escape the cursed island. The girl fishes some fish with a spear and spends her last matches cooking, and decides to make one more walk to the camp before leaving, in order to collect all the necessary items. She then picks up the expired pill container again and holds it thoughtfully, listening to the silence of the island. Eventually, she and Lucas load their belongings onto the raft and launch it into the water. Once inside, Jen discovers that everything inside is flooded with a red liquid, presumably Zack's blood. The girl looks apprehensively at her boyfriend but hesitates to uncover the truth. The guy rows away from the coast and they start moving west, where they can be detected by passing planes. But then, Lucas notices something moving underwater. Moments later, the sea monster jumps and attacks them. Lucas and Jen barricade themselves inside the raft, but the monster continues attacking from all sides. They are very scared, as they were convinced that the monster only appeared at night. 
The sea monster breaks the bottom of the raft and tries to grab Jen, but she pushes it away with her feet. Lucas shoots several times at the monster's head with his flare gun and pushes it into the water with a spear. Water starts coming in through the hole in the bottom of the raft. There's a brief silence, after which the sea monster drags Jen underwater in broad daylight. The creature looks like a giant mix of a shark and a humanoid. It drags Jen slowly towards a black hole on the ocean floor, but the girl, overcoming her terror, remembers the pocket knife. Jen wounds the monster with it, and it swims away from her, bleeding black fluid. Suddenly, the sea monster's attention is drawn to Lucas, who dives into the water to save his girlfriend. The monster quickly swims up to the guy and grabs him. Lucas tries to defend himself with his spear, but the monster drags him to the black hole. Powerless, Jen can do nothing to help. She emerges from the water and screams in despair. With no choice, she has to return to the island, where the torn raft is carried by the current. The girl struggles to light a fire and leaves a last message in her diary. In it, she recounts what happened on the island and shares her experiences with the monster. She hopes the message will help all the shipwreck survivors who may be cast ashore after her, in case she can't handle the creature alone. Jen decides to confront the sea monster and starts preparing for the final battle. She sharpens tree branches and unearths bones from graves to make sharper weapons. At night, the monster goes out to hunt again. Jen lures it into a circle of dry sticks and grass, and then sets it on fire. The monster looks confused, trying to find a way out of the trap. Taking advantage of the moment, the girl comes out from behind cover and attacks first with her spear. She grabs more sharp sticks and tries to attack the monster again, but it throws her away. Jen doesn't give up and keeps attacking the monster desperately, trying to stick as many spears as possible into its recent wound. After a fierce confrontation, the girl tries to crawl to her weapon, but the monster grabs her with a huge paw, squeezing Jen's head, intending to crush her skull. Despite the desperate situation, the girl manages to pull out a small piece of wood and pierces the chest of the sea monster several times with it. Both are severely injured, but the monster keeps pursuing Jen to the shore. The girl stops, ready to attack the monster again, but it collapses, exhausted from its injuries. The girl destroys the creature, piercing it with her spear, and then decapitates its lifeless body. Fortunately, the terrible night turns into dawn. We end here seeing Jen limping towards the raft, carrying the head of the monster as proof of what happened to her on that cursed island, which is now in flames, and fortunately, this will be her salvation, being a signal for someone to see from afar.